Welcome to Dependable Flame, where we explore vintage petrol lighters, ashtrays, tobacchiana, and other useful mechanisms. Make yourself at home. Today we are going to look at what the 1954 lighter repair manual calls gears. I got a question over the weekend on a YouTube video. Gianna Felicia, well actually it wasn't a question, she said, never shows how to line up the star wheels, the most important and hardest part. I asked for some clarification and gave some explanation as to what lining them up entails, um, but her answer told me that uh, maybe she still didn't understand what I was saying about lining them up. And I'm not sure that I understand what she's saying about lining them up. Um, there is not a whole lot to it. There's only one position that everything will go back into. So, never shows how to line up the star wheels, the most important and hardest part. So I'm going to show you several examples here of uh, she did say, yes, the gears in the center. So I'm assuming these are the star wheels she was talking about. Now in most, and the one that I'm most comfortable with, most Ronson type automatic petrol lighters, they're going to have a snuffer or snuffer assembly such as this where a file wheel and a clutch spring are going to slide up in it. And then you have the gears, which are going to be manipulated by the claws here on the thumb lever. You gotta get those gears into place on each side and they only go one way you can pull them out if they will come out then you can you should be able to turn them around sometimes maybe you get a little bit longer life out of a lighter or the, that particular part because you turn it around and you get a little bit better bite works a little bit better than on the other side where it's been used more sometimes not but anyway lining them up inside the snuffer assembly is just that they only go in one way I mean they can go in anyway but you know it doesn't matter this is just the way they go no lining them up they just go where they go so I hope that at least that part is self-explanatory now let me set this one aside for now and as you can see when you set that down you're gonna lose that bottom gear so if you mean by if by lining them up you're talking about keeping a hold of them so you can get them in place well I believe I've showed you that in the other videos but anyway, just to cover our bases here, there are other snuffer type where the gears will be fixed. That will not come out of there. This has a file wheel just the same. It also has a clutch spring. Works in the same manner as the one we just looked at down here. But these are actually half gears and they are integrated into the snuffer. So you don't have to worry about that type. They're not, there's nothing to line up there, at least in the snuffer part. There are others where they appear like they'll come out, but they're so tight. You know, I don't know why or if there's a, a 
a, a point. I think I'm more likely to damage the snuffer if I tried to force those out of there. And this was on a state series lighter, so this isn't even a Ronson. This is just a Ronson clone. But again, that's something that you'll run into sometimes. The gears look like they'll come out, but they won't. Other times you're going to run into, I've just got an assortment down here. You can take a look at all this. If you enjoy watching videos about repairing old petrol lighters, ashtrays, tabacchiana, and other useful mechanisms, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video that you're watching. Tell your friends about the channel. Hit the share button. Send that link off in a text, email, post it on social media. However you communicate with folks nowadays and let them get a look at it for themselves. You can leave any comments or questions below the video. We would also appreciate it if you would follow and like us across all the social media platforms. That will be Dependable Flame or DependableFlame.com on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and of course eBay. So what I have here are some gears or what Gianna called star wheels type assemblies that came out of a different, that came out of a Ronson lighter. And I'm not sure how that kind of system there works. I threw my hands up on that one um, and just replaced it with the standard Ronson type gears. But you're liable to run into half gears, integrated gears, all different kinds of gears, or what you call star wheels. You can, in many ways, they are maybe reversible, depending on the shape, um, depending on the wear. But as far as aligning them, They just go in the slots. A gear shaped hole for a gear. It's like a can't fit a round peg into a square hole or a square peg into a round hole, whatever it is. You just fit them in there just like a puzzle. Now, if by aligning them, if by how to line up the gears or star wheel, you mean lining it up in the lighter, well, then that's what I would call timing the mechanism. And one way or the other, you just line it up. If you take note before you took the lighter apart, then you probably got a pretty good idea of how it came apart. If you try to put it together too high, then your snuffer is going to, or your thumb lever is going to ride too high, and your snuffer will not come up as far as it needs to. So you're going to know that error when you, as soon as you get it put together. The other way, if you had it too low on what you would call your star wheel, if you had it too low, then obviously it's going to Maybe I have that backward. I'm not sure if it raise it too high or too low, whichever it is. The point is, there's only one correct position for the thumb lever to fit with the gears and for the whole assembly to fit together 
and work properly. So, lining it up, sometimes it slips off, sometimes, sometimes you have to redo it on the fly. It always helps to keep things held sideways and leaning downhill like that. Then you get your fulcrum screw into place. Everything comes up as it is supposed to. Sometimes it'll take you a little bit of squeezing to get that fulcrum screw to come all the way through like that. And then once you do, then you can get that cap on there and screw it down. Make sure that you get over to eBay and check out the dependableflame.com store. Every purchase that you make will benefit HDSA, Huntington's Disease Society of America, including three penny start auctions each month, free shipping, High Bidder gets the lighter, Charity gets all the money. 100% of the proceeds of those three listings go to HDSA, Huntington's Disease Society of America. So as you can see, if you don't get it back right, let's go ahead and take it apart and just show you. if we're a notch too high or a notch too low. Sometimes you will need something, a toothpick or a soft wire to apply pressure on that fulcrum screw to push it out. So there's the position we are in. Let's see what happens if we go. That is obviously not going to work because it's not going to bite. So I don't think you would make that mistake and think that you had it timed right. So, you wouldn't go too high with the thumb lever, because it would be obvious, but you went one position off, low with the thumb lever. Fulcrum screw back on. Fulcrum cap back on, I should say. So then it obviously, you can see, isn't going to raise it high enough. So you would know immediately, go back, take it apart. And this is what I meant when I answered you in the question, or when I was trying to explain, I should categorize this correctly. You didn't ask me a question, so I ought to quit saying I was answering one. Um, but that when I said I speak of timing the mechanism, and I think that's what you mean when you're saying lining it up, but it's just trial and error. So... If you get it wrong, if you get your fuel or flint spring screw back in there, 
before you realize it and it's putting pressure and things act like they don't want to work properly well just back off don't don't force anything and you'll be fine so again we get it back up here proper position Fulcrum screw. Cap. Flint back in and a foot spring screw and I hope I have explained or at least shown what you needed to see and if you need to ask again please do that you can see over on my info page, I say, don't hesitate to ask. I make videos on demand all the time, and I do. So, again, if you have a question, ask, and I'll do my best to, to get you the answer that you need. Until next time.